lunch, Lady Doris. Have you got any grease? Yes. Yes, we do. Then grease me up, woman! Welcome to the Boneworks Developer Weapon and Ammo Maxing Guide. I'm Grease Scotsman, and this video is going to cover how ammo works in the game, provide strategies to maximize your ammo haul for each level, with the goal of finally being able to afford those beautiful developer weapons in the Time Tower mono map. So how does ammo work? Well, ammo is a bit like a high score in Boneworks. Every bit of ammo you collect gets added to your stash, and the only way to lose ammo is by firing your weapon or ejecting around from the chamber. What might seem contrary to expectations, you do not lose ammo for pulling a mag from your belt and dropping it. You do not lose ammo for leaving a mag in a weapon that you drop. In fact, once you've grabbed a magazine, you don't have to fiddle with putting it into your ammo belt at all. Just let go of the mag if you're not about to load it into a weapon. And you'll see that the amount on your ammo belt does not change. You don't need to worry if you rush through a map, say if you're hunting for NPC collectibles for the sandbox. The game always takes your best ammo run as you're starting around for the next map. To make this really clear, I've zeroed out my ammo for runoff. To verify this, I'm loading into streets. My ammo count is 940 pistol ammo and 330 rifle ammo. Now, if I load into runoff without picking up any ammo in streets, I should have the same starting amount of ammo as I did for streets. As you can see here, the ammo counts are identical. In other words, my streets ammo pickup count currently is zero. Now I'm going to reload into streets and pick up a total of 80 pistol ammo and zero rifle ammo and then complete the level. That should make my new starting ammo value for runoff 1,020 pistol ammo and 330 rifle ammo. Sure enough, the new best score is reflected as I load in the runoff. When you reach the end of a level, your ammo tally gets saved to your profile, and it becomes the next map's starting value for ammo. That means that if you replay a map and pick up a bit more ammo on the next run, then that best ammo run gets saved to your profile. The game refers to ammo types as light and medium, as shown on the ammo scorecard in the main menu map. Throughout this guide, however, I'm going to refer to light ammo as pistol ammo and medium ammo as rifle ammo to better match the icons on your ammo belt. I've seen a number of Reddit and Steam community posts and YouTube comments where players are unclear how they can afford developer weapons or even some of the more expensive monomount items found in earlier levels. They look at their ammo counts and see that they would need to use both pistol and rifle ammo types in order to afford an expensive item. This becomes really obvious when you look at the developer weapons, as there is no way to buy a developer weapon without switching ammo types mid-deposit. To do this, notice that I went to the cheap monomat first and bought a sidearm and an MK-18. This puts weapons that use each ammo type in my inventory. As I run out of rifle ammo, my belt becomes empty and I'm no longer able to feed the monomat. However, if I equip my sidearm, that will instantly switch my belt to show pistol ammo, and I can continue feeding the beast until I can afford a developer weapon of my choosing. Also note that I'm gently tossing the ammo mag in an arc into the vending machine. This is on purpose. If you accidentally clip your hand into the monomat or mistakenly move your hand through the mag that you're tossing, the game may sometimes launch you through the wall or the floor with such velocity that you will clip through the floor and then fall into oblivion. When that happens, the level will reload and you'll have to start all over again. When you're buying a 24,500 ammo developer weapon, the last thing you want is to have to redo the process. If your sandbox is looking a little sparse and you don't mind being cheesy, you can load up the museum level, block the security door that normally prevents you from backtracking to the reclamation bin with a small silver trash can. Then, grab one of the large blue trash cans out on the firing range floor, 
load it up with as much as you'd like to reclaim, and then dump your haul into the reclamation bin. After that, simply complete the level, and every single weapon that you dumped into the reclamation bin will be there in your sandbox. Having stuff in the sandbox is nice, but in order to spawn weapons, enemies, and gadgets within story mode, you need to earn enough ammo to buy dev weapons from the Time Tower monomat. To do this, you're going to need to get creative and rely heavily on melee weapons. Remember, every shot you fire decreases your ammo score, so the way to maximize your ammo for a level is to play melee only. And search every nook and cranny for ammo boxes that are often quite well hidden or tucked away on some high perch. As you're searching high and low, you'll need to reach Boneworks boxes by hand that you might have previously shot down with your gun. A melee playthrough is no big deal when dealing with enemies that have no ranged attack. In fact, I often just run past Nullmen as they aren't much of a threat, and killing them only slows me down. But what about the cleanup crew, that can seemingly aimbot your head the moment you peek out from cover? The remainder of this guide is going to showcase a few methods that deal with them so that you can maximize your ammo haul and earn your developer weapons with ease. Your goal should be to obtain 22,100 ammo. This will let you purchase and reclaim the utility gun, and will let you buy all the other developer weapons except for the Nimbus, otherwise maybe known as the Noclip gun, that lets you fly through the level. Getting the utility gun means that you can also get the power puncher weapon, and it makes dealing with enemies of any type both hilarious and efficient. You can earn a total of 25,690 ammo across the maps before Time Tower. And if you block the elevator from completely rising on the Time Tower, you can even grab the ammo on that level and then head back down and use it toward your monomat purchases. The maximum ammo amounts for each level are listed on the ammo scorecard in the main menu. In general, I recommend targeting your scavenging efforts on the map where you are missing the most ammo. Search it thoroughly, as improving your ammo score on that map will provide the best bang for your buck. Also keep in mind that the most expensive developer weapon is 24,500 ammo. This means that you can miss 1,190 ammo across all of the levels, and still have enough to purchase the Nimbus gun. However, the utility gun itself is only 22,100 ammo, which means that you can be missing 3,590 ammo across all levels, and still afford it. And once you can buy the utility gun, you will also have all the ammo you need for all the other weapons except for the Nimbus gun, as they are all cheaper than the utility gun. Notice in this segment that I'm going to leave the Null Men standing, as they will become threat targets to occupy the cleanup crew, while I grab the trash can lid. This lets me dispatch him later with ease. I'm also going to let him do my dirty work for me, by positioning the Null Men between us and let him gun them down. My favorite combo for the spillaway section of runoff, where you're going to face off against several cleanup crew riflemen, is a large trash can and a cinder block. Where you grab or pick up each item matters, as you want the best control over these semi-heavy items and need to minimize flailing them around while blocking incoming fire. Grab the cinder block in the center so that it's balanced in your hand. Similarly, I like to grab the trash can by its handles, as this angles the trash can away from my body so that it bounces less against my body as I move, providing more control as I use it as a shield. The next critical mechanic to utilize is the last stand. In Boneworks, if you are killed before you completely expire, you enter a last stand phase. If you get a kill before your eyes completely close, you will be instantly revived. You can use this fact to your advantage and hold off delivering a killing blow against one enemy if you expect incoming fatal damage from another.
here I can tell that I've lined up the crewmen, but I'm pretty sure they're about to shoot each other. So I'm just going to hide behind my trash can and let them take pot shots at me. Hope that some collateral fire will make them turn on each other. Sure enough, they do. I will say right now that you will want to shatter the barrels on the tower level until you get the katana. The barrels spawn melee weapons randomly, or spawn nothing at all, so it may take a few map restarts before you get the sword. Keep in mind that the katana may spawn lodged into a barrel next to it, making it hard to see, so check thoroughly before reloading the map, thinking that it didn't spawn. The katana is probably the strongest melee weapon in the game. It has fantastic reach, it's a bladed weapon, so that means you can just drag it across enemies' necks for massive damage while staying out of range of flailing Nullman slaps. You can hold the sword in front of your face and just let crablets jump at you, as their impact against it will usually one-shot them. In short, grab the katana. It makes the melee run on the tower much, much easier. Each time you want to reclaim one of these developer items, you'll need to play through the time tower level. To minimize the effort it takes to reclaim these items and reduce the chance that you will make a mistake and die, and therefore have to start all over again, including feeding the developer monomat its tens of thousands of ammo, I highly recommend reclaiming your developer weapon as soon as you get up to the final fight area. Next, preload and pre-position all of the pressure cannons that launch the gravity cores, then simply run around to the four cannons and hit their buttons. You'll finish the level extremely quickly and with little to no danger of dying. The remainder of this video is just a showcase of various NPCs and weapons that you can play with in story mode once you've unlocked the utility gun in the time tower.
And that's it. Hopefully this guide's been useful. Thanks for tuning in.